Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got our first look at Unfinity. This is the new unset from Magic the Gathering. So I picked up this one from my local game store and probably overpaid, but that's okay. I uh, wanted to support my local game store and get this box early. I actually picked it up last night. Also got my game day promotion card, the water gun balloon fight. So let's go ahead and uh, crack this thing open and see what kind of shock land we get in the box topper. So far, uh, pretty sure that's what you get in the box toppers. Uh, not sure if it's guaranteed. I haven't read all the, the fine print as of yet. But we'll go ahead and slide that to the side because that's likely to be the most valuable card in the box. And then we'll, uh, we'll line up our 12 packs here. And uh, we're just going to take our time with this one. It's first opening. I haven't... Uh, I've only watched a couple of other people open up boxes uh, who had early access. So, you know, and these cards are just fun cards. So let's see what we got here. All right. So we got a Now You See Me, a Sanguine Sipper. Okay. A little joke vampire there. Followed by a Wolf in Blank's Clothing. Bamboozling Be Beeble. And then a park bleeder, uh, attempted murder. All right, and then we get our first attraction card here in regular foil, uh, the clown extruder. And we're going to see Jermaine Pride of the Circus as our first rare, followed by a galaxy foil of a hat trick. So the galaxy foils uh, are available for everything but the attraction card. So it's essentially like an extra new foil treatment for everything. All right. And then we're going to see a devil, uh, K. Neville, coming in as a rare galaxy foil. And then we're going to see Tusk and Whiskers in the showcase frame. Followed by the countdown, is it one? So this is going to be one of, uh, it's kind of like a list hit or a throwback or a reprint, whatever you want to call it, uh, from previous unsets. So there's a slot for that. And then we have Flurry of M Myra's Marvels also coming in um, in Galaxy Foil. And these really do look pretty darn uh, sweet in person, just the way that everything kind of glitters and shimmers. Real impressed with them. All right, and then we're going to see our traditional foil um, on-planet land from a plains. And look at that mountain there. It doesn't even really look like a mountain. Very cool. And then in the back, we get our clown robot with a food token. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do piles. So we'll just kind of stack them up. And I will be doing a full MTG box analysis on Infinity at the end of this video. We've got all the uh, stats and figures kind of set up and lined up. So we got a Blankosaurus, followed by a Blorbian Buddy, an Art Appreciation, Rockstar, then a Trapeze Artist. Oh, missed one there. Ambassador Blurberty Blorp Boop. And then our next attraction, Information Booth. And then Myra the Magnificent. Nice mythic showing on up. Then we got ourselves a coming attraction in Galaxy Foil with a Centaur of Attention. And then DK Finder of the Lost. Showcase Galaxy. And then Dr. Julius Jumble Morph coming in uh, from, from the Unstable set. And it came from Planet Glurg. Mythic showing on up in Showcase. With a Planes and a Galaxy Planes. Very nice. And in the back we get a Zombie Employee with a Storm Crow. So I think I'm just going to go rare. I'll put the attractions in a separate pile and galaxies. And 
And I went with the muted gray background for the uh, for the playmat today because I figured these things have so much color and so much shine. I really wanted them to uh, to take the center stage. So we got ourselves a jetpack janitor, followed by a disemvowel command performance, followed by a tapper, the robot, animate object. Clandestine Chameleon, a Kitty Coaster, a Truss Chief Engineer with an Icy Manipulator coming in uh, Galaxy Foil, and a Tokeki Elemental, perhaps, and DK Finder of the Lost Again with a Hot Fix coming in uh, from Unstable. And Devil, <laughs> Devil K. Neville uh, showing up here in Showcase. Very cool. Card number 500 in Galaxy Treatment with a mountain and an island. And then we see ourselves a clown robot with a balloon in the back. The lands are really, really amazing from this particular cycle. Uh, the space ones are currently going for more than the planetary ones. Um, but I think... You, you can't go wrong either way. Wizards really did a uh, really did a nice job uh, with the artwork on these. All right, so we got ourselves a nearby planet, followed by a chicken trope, amped up. An incident has occurred. Tusk and whiskers, and then a blank blankety blank rocket ship. And we're going to see a squirrel stack coming in for our attraction. Followed by a meet and greet sissy, or sissy. And then leading performance coming in. And then Hardy of Myra's Marvels. And then Tuscan Whiskers again in showcase. With an oddly uneven. <laughs> Love that artwork. And then Katarina of Myra's Marvels with an island and a swamp. So this is our first swamp coming in here. And we're going to see ourselves the classic teddy bear with the storm crow in the back. So I would love to see uh, a shock land in the normal packs. That's, I think, uh, definitely where the, the money is. The fun is certainly in the cards. The shock lands are where the money is. So we got ourselves a Soul Swindler. Super Duper Lost. Nice filbit. Uh, Robo Pinata. Uh, Scooch. Uh, Haber Thrasher. Sword Swallowing Seraph. And our attraction is a Drop Tower. Now, if you didn't know, there um, there's about 135 different variants of the attractions, uh, and uh, they come in all the rarities. Uh, but they're just the numbers on the side of the attractions. Here, I'll pull one back up. Right, like the order in which these occur vary. Um, some of them have up to six different variations. So we got a centaur of attention, a questionable cuisine. And we're going to see ourselves a far out mythic coming in from white with an angelic herald and an old fogey coming in here. Very nice. And Nocturno, Nocturno of Myra's Marbles with an island and a plains. And our token is going to be squirrel and food. All right, so getting into pack number six here. Straighten up our pile just a smidge. All right, we got ourselves a finishing move here. And then a ride guide. Slight malfunction. With the vegetation abomination. Line prancers. An icy manipulator. 
and our attraction is a Hall of Mirrors. And the attractions, uh, in case you weren't aware, have a different back. Uh, they kind of go in a kind of a separate, a separate stack. Um, so we got ourselves a, a how is this a par three? A little mini golf, ticking time bomb, goblin crucibleist, the space family Robinson, and we got ourselves a kind slaver. Trust Chief Engineer. And then we're going to see ourselves an island and a mountain in the back. With a zombie employee and a food token. All right, so that's stack number one. Six packs to go. So we've got a good day to pie. Followed by a line cutter. Rude. Season Buttoneer, Impounding Lot Bot, The Big Top, Goblin Airbrusher, followed by a Pick a Beeble as our attraction. And we got an exchange of words Non Human Cannonball, The Most Dangerous Gamer. Brim's Baron Midway Mobster coming in here in that galaxy treatment again with an animate library. Uh, Ignacio of Myra's Marvels, of Mira's Marvels, with a stunning planes and an equally stunning island in that uh, galaxy treatment again with a teddy bear and a balloon in the back. So no shocklands yet. They're only rares, not mythics. You would think you might get a few of them. All right, ticket omation. A grabby tabby. Minotaur de Force. Glitter Flitter. An autograph book. Uh, monitor, uh, monitor, monitor. Balloon stand for our attraction. And then we're going to see a soul performer. Followed by a big winner. Meet and greet Sisse. A spinneret arachnobat in showcase with a better than one coming in from unstable. Flurious of Mira's Marvels. Fluoros, and we get ourselves a forest here with another forest in the back. So those are the two different variations of forest with a clown robot and a storm uh, crow in the back. I've always been a fan of the unsets. I remember uh, cracking the first one way back in the day. Um, they're less funny when you read them 20 years later, uh, but still, they're enjoyable to look at. So we got a dissatisfied customer. Uh, crooked Amphubonaut, a bar entry, Deadbeat Attendant, Night Shift of the Living Dead, with a pair of lost dice, or pair O lost dice, and Clover the Spot, or Cover the Spot, in, uh, for our attraction, and then an Omni Clown Colossus, followed by a Glitter Flitter. There is a print line going straight down that card. Uh, we got a Flurries of, Mar of Myra's Marvels. Moxana Midway Manager. And then a Hydra Doodle coming in. Along with Myra uh, the Magnificent. Nice mythic. Then we get ourselves a mountain and a plains in the back. With a squirrel. And some more food, because what amusement park doesn't need as, as much food as you can possibly get. All right, mistakes were made. wonder if they're going to say that in a few months. Got ourselves a goblin, 
or a blank goblin. Park map with an alpha guard. Fight the blank fight. Park reentry. Got to push your luck for our attraction. And Vorthos, Steward of Myth, coming in as a nice mythic. And just courtesy check. Star Starlight Spectator. Ambassador of Blorpity Blorp. Man, my piles are just going nuts here. So, Ambassador. Enter the dungeon. Trust Chief Engineer. With an island and a swamp. And a clown robot and a treasure. The stack of uh, rares is getting quite high and in the way. So I'm just going to slide it up to the top there. Keep our lands in focus. So we've got two more packs to go. All right, so we've got ourselves a bag check. Followed by an aerial font. Questionable cuisine again. Focused funambulist. Discourtesy check clerk. Assembled ensemble. A spinny ride. Then we're going to see Katarina of Myra's Marbles. Followed by a stilt strider. Carnival Barker. Pietra, Crafter of Clowns. Coming in the showcase, Uncommon. Cool art there. And then a Graveyard Busybody. With Ignacio of Myra's Marvels. And we're going to see ourselves a swamp. With a mountain in the back. And then the robots. With some more food. All right, last pack. And then we're going to go to the box topper. Which they're... Should be a shock land in there. All right, big wiener. Followed by decisions, decisions. And an atom wheel acrobatics. Electrocute. Resolute Vegasaur. Octo Octopus. And we get ourselves a trash bin as an attraction. I'm not sure if that's really an attraction. Uh, and then we're going to see the black hole coming in here. Very nice. Animate object. Lily Hospitality Hostess. Brim's Baron Midway Mobster. And then the everything of a jig. And we're going to see Devil K. Neville. And we're going to see ourselves a mountain and a forest, followed by a cat and a balloon token. All right, so now let's get to our box topper here and see what we get inside. All right, so we're going to see ourselves an overgrown tomb coming in here. Uh, this is just in regular old foil, not Galaxy. Uh, so this is valued somewhere around $30 right now. We'll see if that price holds. Uh, very cool artwork, though. All right. So give me just a moment. I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. All right, and we're back. Everything's been sorted and organized. Now let's get into the MTG box analysis. Let's start things off with a look at the Infinity set. The set contains 286 unique cards. Infinity introduces a new card type called Attractions. The set contains 35 different attractions, ranging in rarity from common to rare. However, those 35 cards actually have 135 different variations because of the numbering on the right side of the attraction card. So you can really think of Infinity as having 386 cards when you include all of those variants. Speaking of variants, all of these cards are available in non-foil as well as traditional foil and everything but the attractions are available in the new Galaxy Foil treatment. 
This means that if you want to collect every single piece of cardboard in the set, you'd be looking at 1,023 cards. Now let's take a look at the distribution of this box across the set. This chart shows all the cards we saw during the opening. The traditional foils are in orange and the galaxy foils are in blue. From the main set, this box contained between 11 and 19 cards for each of the primary colors of Magic. We only saw one borderless card in this box and it was our box topper. However, it is possible to see additional borderless cards in the collector booster boxes. Finally, we saw 47 galaxy foils in the box. This may seem odd, but this is because there is a slot in the packs that will either contain a foil showcase or a galaxy foil, and thus the number is not consistent pack to pack. Switching over to coverage, in the traditional foil space, we saw 118 unique cards, which gave us 47% coverage of the 251 cards in the main set. Our highest coverage was in green, with 59% of the cards making an appearance in the box. Our 12 attractions provided us 9% coverage of the 135 variants, which should be consistent for all collector booster boxes unless you receive an exact duplicate attraction. In the Galaxy Foil space, we saw 47 unique cards, which gave us 19% coverage of the cards in the set. Our highest coverage was in red and green with 19%. We also saw 8 of the 10 full art lands in Galaxy Foil for 80% coverage. Pivoting the coverage by rarity, in this box we saw 61% of the commons in foil, as well as 42% of the uncommons, 25% of the rares, and 15% of the mythics. For the attractions, we saw 12 cards, one per pack. Five of these were commons, five were uncommons, and two were rares. In the galaxy foil space, we saw 7 commons for 9% coverage, 11 uncommons for 15% coverage, 15 rares for 23% coverage, and 2 mythics for 8% coverage. Let's take a minute to look at the potential value of the cards in the Unfinity set. This chart shows the 251 standard cards plus the 135 attractions by dollar category in non-foil prices. Currently, one day after launch, the only cards valued over $10 in the non-foil space are the Borderless Shocklands. There are six cards valued between $5 and $10, but two of those are also Shocklands. The set does contain 16 cards valued between $1 and $5, but the remaining 354 cards, if you include all the attraction variants, are valued less than a dollar. In the Galaxy Foil space, things are looking pretty good. Currently, there are 17 cards valued over $10. Five of the Shocklands in this treatment are demanding over $100 right now. We'll see if that holds. There's also 14 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 84 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 136 Galaxy Foils are currently valued less than a dollar. Now let's take a look at the value that we actually saw in this box. The only traditional foil that we saw that was valued over $10 was our box topper. The Overgrown Tomb valued at $29.99. We didn't see any cards valued between $5 and $10, but luckily we did hit 21 cards valued over a dollar, thanks mostly due to 9 of the 12 foil lands being valued in that range. The remaining 100 foils in the box are currently valued less than a buck. In the Galaxy foil space, we did a little bit better seeing one card valued over $10, five cards valued between $5 and $10, and 17 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 24 Galaxy foils that we saw are currently valued at less than a dollar at this time. A new feature of Infinity Collector Booster Packs are cards from the list. In the past, cards from the list could only be found in set booster packs, but in Infinity, Wizards is only selling draft and collector packs, so I guess they really wanted to include cards from previous unsets somehow. I really hope this is a one-off thing and that we don't start seeing cards from the list inside collector booster boxes, because this will just further reduce the overall return on investment for these expensive products. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box from my local game store for the insane price of $249.99, not including tax. Today we opened up 12 packs with 15 cards each, seeing a total of 180 cards plus a box stopper. The 12 unset list cards have a total value of $18.21. The 12 double-sided tokens have a combined value of $5.92. The 121 foils from the main set are currently valued at $68.96. And the 47 Galaxy foil cards have a total value of $89.78. Our one box topper, the Overgrown Tomb, currently has a market value of $29.99 in foil. 
This brings the grand total for the box up to $212.86. This is a loss of $37.13 for me. This means that we also only saw 85% of the box price being returned in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards just valued over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 22 cards valued over two bucks in this box with a combined value of $119.61, which is less than half of what I paid for the box. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out mtgboxanalysis.com for additional metrics about this collector booster box and every other box opening on the channel. Until next time, do something amazing.